Today I'm working on a 16 by 20 inch canvas where I'll be using a bunch of modeling paste, some crackle paste, and I'll coffee dye some papers. So let's get started. I'm putting a good bit of modeling paste all over my canvas to give us some nice texture. Then I've got this crackle paste I'm using that I've had for years and always forget that I have it. And I'm going to just apply that around the edges uh, to see what it'll do. I'm hoping it gives me a nice crackle effect. I set my canvas aside to dry overnight because I've got a lot of stuff on there. And I start coffee dyeing my psalm papers. And I just mixed a bunch of my husband's instant espresso coffee with a little bit of water and then I'm just kind of soaking them in this pan and then putting them on wax paper and let them dry out. I love how my modeling paste and crackle paste uh, turned out. Now I'm mixing some navy white and a little bit of dark gray. I've got an idea of the blue that I'd like in my head so we'll see if we can make it come together. Once I get my blues mixed up, then I'm going to start applying it to my canvas. Um, I'm going to kind of put some darker tones in the center and get lighter as it goes on the outside is what I think I'm going to do here. We'll see how it goes. And then I'll get out a baby wipe and tap it into the white and start moving that around. Now I'm gonna go in and trace my birds onto the back of my papers. I wish I had paid more attention <laughs> to how they were sitting, how I wanted them to sit on the canvas uh, before I did this, because I wound up cutting a couple of them so that the writing was kind of wonky. And I want you to be able to read the Psalms on the birds once they're decoupaged on. So I had to go back and do a couple of the birds over. Using a little burnt umber and my liner brush, I'm, I go around each bird and just finish them off with a nice little edge there. I'm using a paper towel to wipe away as I put the line on because I don't want it to be a harsh line. I want it to be kind of just a, a what's the word I'm looking for? a soft, a soft edge. Now I'm using my first mandala stencil, some burnt umber, and uh, my dauber, which is a makeup sponge in a clothespin with about a half inch sticking out the bottom. Uh, that is my perfect dauber in my opinion. I really like the look of the mandala not being so perfect on there with so much paint like I did on that very first one. Not that that's perfect, but you see what I mean. The ones I'm doing now, I really like better. So I'm gonna go back in with the baby wipe, as you'll see in a little bit, and try to remove some of the paint on that first one. And then I'm going to, uh, well, you'll see what I do here in just a minute. Now I just cut the end off my dauber, scooch it down just a little bit so I've still got that half inch. Put out some antique gold and uh, getting ready to go in with my second mandala. But then I'm thinking about that dark one, that dark first one that I don't like. So I'm going to come in with the baby wipe now and see if I can remove some of that guy. And then while that's drying, I will start applying my second mandala on top of... Um, I'll start off to my right. And I'm just lining up the center, but I don't want them to line up perfectly, but I just want the centers lined up. With 
with everything dry, it's time to decoupage my birds on. I like to use Mod Podge with a little bit of water in it. And I'm going to put a little bit down and then I'm going to uh, put my bird, a little bit more Mod Podge, smush out the bottle, bubbles and <laughs> I then put a little bit more on top then when I get all done, I'm going to put a nice coating all over the entire canvas. And then I'll go in with a baby wipe and tap all over to make sure that I've got the same nice even coat and texture over the entire canvas and no brush strokes. I've mixed a little burnt umber into my modeling paste and then I'll put it out on my plate here to work with. I do this uh, even though I'm coming in with a metallic brown here in a little bit to paint over the top. It's a lot easier to cover a brown than it is a white. Now I've learned I gotta be careful when I'm adding color or paint to my modeling paste because if I make it too runny, then my paste isn't going to act like I want it to act. So I just do as much as I can, as I need to, and then I'll come back and like I said, we'll paint it afterwards to get the proper color. I'm using uh, the, my stencil with the kind of the bud looking <laughs> branches. And I've cut them in half so that I can use one, kind of set it aside, use the other one, and keep going back and forth. And, and I'm starting at the top of my canvas and working my way down so that I don't stick my arms in the wet modeling paste, uh, which I tend to do quite a bit. <laughs> I'm not trying to be perfect here. I want a nice looking rough branch. I do as many branches as I can with my stencils without overlapping and getting making a bigger mess that I'm already making uh, and then I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and keep doing that until I get all my branches done. My first set of branches are dry and I've decided before I go in with my next group of branches. I made up a little bit of a very light colored blue and I'm going to tap a little bit on here. I've got an alligator clip and um, a large pom-pom on there and I'm just, I want to just dab it on here and there just to kind of soften my mandalas a little bit here and uh, and then I'm going in and kind of blending everything with a baby wipe. I did three different rounds of branches and let those dry and now I'm coming in with my brown metallic and I'm just going to go over and paint all the little bud areas. I still got a, a few spots that I notice as I go that I of the modeling base where I made a mess that I'm going to go in and clean those up with my baby wipe and uh, just get all of these branches covered. Hey, thanks for watching today. If you like this kind of video, it would be awesome if you would hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Hope you'll join me next time.